tell me about the incubation process. Once someone is exposed or has contracted it, what happens from there? Well, the virus itself can enter the human body through the nose, the eyes, or the mouth. It wants to get into respiratory tissue. Once it does that, it binds to a specific enzyme site. It has a big name. We call it the ACE enzyme. Okay? From there, um, it starts reproducing and then spreads both up and down the respiratory tract. Now, this doesn't happen right away, obviously, and that's the incubation period. So you're exposed, and then um, you have a period of about, about five days. And you, know, you could argue four to seven, but five is common sense. About five days, you start feeling symptoms. The first symptom is almost always a fever. It's around 101 to 102 followed in a f two days by a cough, a dry cough, and then often chest pain. And then two days after that, you're going to be short of breath. In terms of how long someone is, so that's the incubation period. Right. Once you start to exhibit symptoms, is the incubation period over with? Is this yes. The, what, what is that phase Incubation called? means the asymptomatic phase. Okay. You're not sick. It's incubating in you. Now, part of that period, about half of it, you're contagious. And that's why we have problems with this group isolation. Okay, could you say, do you feel okay? Yeah, you have a fever. No, but you're still contagious. And there's no way to know that yet until we get full testing. Now, to give you an idea of the way this is being approached, uh, Korea is testing 10,000 people a day China is producing 1.6 million tests a week to test the population. How about here in the U.S.? We, uh, we had, a, I think, a run of bad luck. I don't want to blame the CDC. Their budget has been cut from $13.5 billion to $5.5 billion. So that makes our response much more difficult. Again, I have some questions that viewers sent sure. us. Uh, let me start with, does UV light kill the virus? Something like a table outside that sits in the sun. Yes, UV light does kill the virus. It's not perfect, but it's a lot better than nothing. So UV light is helpful. Uh, these germicidal, the truly germicidal UV lights will kill the virus. It'll just take an hour or two. Wow, okay. Um, that, that's a very good question. <clears throat> Can you get the coronavirus more than once? Now, uh, you've asked a million-dollar question because one of my colleagues in Japan called the other morning, 5 a.m., just to get my attention. Wow. Uh, well, 12-hour time difference. And they had a patient they treated in the hospital, went home supposedly well, 14 days later was playing basketball, gets short of breath, comes back in. They don't know whether it's a reinfection or a relapse. I suspect it's a relapse because even after you feel better, you still shed that virus for five to seven days or maybe even longer. Right. Uh, I had heard on my way out the door that, that there was new reports that there could be two different strains of the virus, one's more, more, more aggressive than the other. Have you heard something? Like that? Yes, and that many viruses undergo amplification. In other words, this was a virus that came from bats, likely came through a, a Chinese anteater called a pangolin, and then got out into the general population. Now, we know it was a problem because unlike SARS, where one person got sick, then another, then another, here like 12 people got sick at the same time. This person says, everyone in my office has been coughing and has some sort of allergy or cold. When should I be concerned about coronavirus and when can I chalk it up to being exposed to more than common ailments? Well, for right now, I would chalk it up to common ailments. You know, and there's an old saying in medicine, when you hear hoofbeats, you think of horses, not zebras. Okay, so we have uh, three cases in the Bay Area. 
uh, not that many people are being observed right now. Uh, it will come here, I believe, eventually. Uh, and actually, there are some good aspects to the virus. Number one is children are relatively unaffected. Okay? Great news. Uh, another bit of good news is that pregnant women are not affected, which is great news. The bad news for Florida is if you're over 60, you have problems. And I would strongly encourage anyone over 60 to get a pneumococcal vaccine. Because when we look at deaths in China, a number of deaths are due not to the coronavirus. They get the coronavirus, they're in the hospital, then they get pneumococcal pneumonia on top of it. And that's totally preventable with a vaccine now. Wow, okay. Speaking of a vaccine, how long could it take to develop a vaccine for the coronavirus? In the United States, following FDA guidelines, it's not conceivable that it would be less than a year. But recall, many countries don't have FDA guidelines. So China feels they're moving ahead with the vaccine. So does Japan. So does Korea. Okay. Uh, what about hydrogen peroxide? Would that kill the virus? Yes. Hydrogen peroxide would kill the virus very well. Alcohol kills it great. So what I recommend people do is when they come into work, you think it's your desk, but you don't really know who's been there. So I suggest they wipe their desk down and their keyboard with alcohol, okay? And if they're on a plane, take your Lysol handy wipes with you and don't sit in that chair until you wipe down stuff. And if you don't think that's good advice, go on a plane early and watch them clean it you'll really want to use the hand wipes. Yeah, whether, no matter what, if there's coronavirus or not. Yeah. Uh, speaking of traveling, uh, we got a question here. It says, uh, I'm traveling from Tampa to Connecticut March 6th through March 8th. Is it safe? I am 66 years old. Now, they've asked uh, a couple questions. Uh, it's hard to look into the future. A big problem with this coronavirus are disruptions in travel. And a perfect place to catch it is a crowded airport. So it's really not getting on an airplane and going to Connecticut. It's that you're going to be in airports with people you don't know where they're from. You don't know how well they've been screened. Um, I think it's, from what little you've told me, would I make the trip? Sure. Would I do it in April? I have no idea until I see what the numbers are. Right. Would I fly to, out of the United States? No. Uh, simply because we might be quarantined completely. Uh, you know, things looked okay in Korea for the last four days, then they had 500 new cases last night. Right. So it's so unpredictable. That, um, I would avoid international travel, and the university has banned it for the employees. Right. What about even places like Seattle? You know, Seattle is, you know, it's still within the United States, but certainly has, I think, been affected more than areas out no, here. No one knows. Yeah. Um, I'm supposed to go to Seattle myself. I'm trying to decide what to do. Why doesn't Florida have test kits for the virus? The truth is that we don't know how many cases there are here if there are 150 people under observation who can't be tested. Okay. Um, number one, I would tell you it's not Florida's fault. You know, we have to get the kit. Florida doesn't manufacture the kits. The kits have to be prepared by a jobber. They have to be validated because an inaccurate test is probably worse than no test. Right. Um, then... Um, People have to be trained to use them. Uh, it'll take a while to get it rolled out. Again, I feel this is a problem with cutting money to vital federal agencies. This is not a CDC fault. It's understaffing as a result of budget cuts. I think the Florida Department of Health is doing an excellent job given the resources they have and the lack of federal backup.